Welcome to TradeTheNBA.com. This is John. This reports for the 28th. And as we approach the end of the month, well, the excitement. That was a pretty nice follow-through from the um, DLC spread that took place, uh, well, a few days back. Um, preemptively even started a couple of days even before that when it began right here. And it really started to escalate uh, as we get the separation of the cyan and green. Uh, even if you took it earlier, you just would have been, you know, sweating a day or two, but uh, literally that's why we were looking for um, the beginning breakdown and the shakeout. And we knew this was coming, higher highs, lower shakeout reading, and then it was just waiting for the DSC catalyst to really... Now, some damage has been done. We've got dips below the red line here. Um, even with this pop back up, uh, you know, irrational fear, everyone runs for the exits. People see that as opportunity, particularly right here as we hit exactly at the 61% uh, Morganacci line and um, popping right back up there. And this is because we, we knew we had the short-term buyers. We just weren't sure if there was going to be enough uh, juice. It started to pop up uh, late in the day um, yesterday, and we're seeing the follow-through of that. So that's where those short-term buyers, but you can still see we're in a nice still decline with uh, mid-term and long-term buyers. So um, these are people who are just seeing value that may be short-lived. We'll take a look intraday and see how it looks uh, a little bit uh, Further down, NQ, likewise, similar setup, no question about it. And again, I mentioned that this wasn't uh, crisis mode yet. Um, Euro, you know, bird exit supposedly taking place. Uh, I think this is about it. We'll see if it actually, it's not really even that much of an exit, so um, it's mostly uh, cosmetic. Uh, the real concern right here is this oil um, and whether or not we start to break down further from here because this is, uh, you know, both the fear of the China virus, uh, we still don't know where that's going to go, and uh, how much that will impact uh, China uh, growth and demand uh, for oil, and so you may have a momentarily uh, huge supply increases. So we'll see what the uh, numbers come out, but uh, what we're looking at from a broader standpoint is it uh, systemic slower growth or just a blip because of the fear. But that was our early warning on the um, well market dip, uh, if you can even call it that. I mean, I would, it's a minor amount given what we've seen from an increased standpoint. Uh, gold still staying at peak because we're still bombing uh, in the Middle East. It hasn't caught much news. Uh, of course, then you had uh, the, the revelations from the supposed you know leak of book stuff. That's just a, not going anywhere. It's mostly drama. So, intraday though, we started off with a deep decline. It was beautiful. We ended up with uh, some nice rally points built back up. I'm gonna have to shrink this quite a bit simply because of the amount of volume, but gives you the broader view of the day. We can expand from there and start taking a look at, you know, and you ended up with a couple of these DLC spreads where you ended up with the uh, steel below negative 13.5. You know those are likely to still face um, strength coming into it. Uh, particularly when we had the magenta still so close to the 15. The secondary one though was much cleaner, lower shakeout, had already broken down and then boom immediately you get the dip below the red line. So even when you see this little pop back up, um, not unexpected, you still know that you're going to see that low retested and that becomes an opportunity to attack uh, any straight in the minute you see weakness which took place again. Uh, well I can mark that one too secondarily. Right there where the steel's about to cross, green's already below, cyan pops up, those are all the little cursors, it takes a bar or so, and then boom, you head back to the zero Morganacci line, and uh, you continue to stay weak throughout that uh, setup, uh, spidering immediately every time it was uh, tempted a green, even if you were tempted at this one, barely the break above the uh, negative 13.5. Uh, might have convinced you, but immediately you would have seen the rejection and that would have been exit and return to the lower. And sure enough, we came right back to these same algo levels from before. There's a reason we put them in there, these positive extremes. These are the, the values that the algos pick, not random uh, uh, Fibonacci lines and stuff like that uh, that most people see. The computers, you know, for whatever their algorithms have selected, these numbers. Uh, for whatever varied reasons, uh, it's not really relevant as much as just being able to capture and see where they are. And sure enough, uh, as we turned around, we get the move right at the key of it, 
pops above it, then it becomes support, and that's where we're seeing this massive pre-market climb because lower volumes, it can do that, but oh yeah, we got positive extremes all the way from right here around 32.50. So that's the uh, downside. It's about 10 points from where we're at right now uh, for a potential retrace that's going to happen. Not with Sanyo under red, but we can see that uh, even if we get a DOC red right here, uh, you get a full reset of steel, so it's likely to bounce back uh, pretty decently. So I think it was some pretty dramatic stuff, but uh, very clean action and uh, really beautiful with how uh, candle colors are capturing that uh, transition very nicely. And we can certainly see with uh, our DOC readings, particularly when we know that we didn't get a DOC steel reset through any of this, that there was going to be continued weakness. Uh, it wasn't until we got the red DOC breaking past that negative 7.5 that there was real strength in there. and can see how that translates so beautiful stuff as always though I'll keep pointing out these unique situations when they occur and uh, put them up on uh, the Skype chat trade well we'll talk again later